We called it Kamunalka. In the room next door to us, there lived a nosy old lady with her cat. In the Soviet Union, the government was very conscious about people looking after their environment. It was like a big, massive tardy up party. We used to use something special as an air freshener. Guess what it was? Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Olga. I live in the northwest of England, but I come from St. Petersburg, Russia. This channel is normally about fell running, trail running and hiking in Britain. However, last week I posted a video on here sharing with you what it was like growing up in the USSR, the Soviet Union. Those memories are quite dear to my heart and being Russian is part of my cultural identity. Even though I believe that I have integrated into British culture quite well, quite organically. After my first video about growing up in the Soviet Union, I received a quite a positive response from the viewers. If you haven't seen it and would like to watch it, I'm going to post the link for it in the description and the comments below. Some viewers asked if I could make another video continuing my story about growing up in the Soviet Union and Russia. At first I didn't think it would be a good idea, because originally I started this channel with the intent to dedicate it to the great outdoors in Britain, where I live now. However, the name of my channel is Olga's British Fells. And so far, I have covered the British Fells part of it really well. So now I guess I'm addressing more of the Olga's bit of the name of my channel. Anyway, I decided to continue my story about growing up in the Soviet Leningrad, now St. Petersburg. So without any further ado, let's get on with part two. Let's go! As I mentioned in my previous video, my mum and dad met at university. They studied at Leningrad Institute of Aerospace Engineering. They were the ones who developed the love of the great outdoors in me and introduced me to hiking mountains in Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, the former republics of the former USSR. After my parents graduated from the university, they were lucky enough to be sent by the government to work on the outskirts of St. Petersburg, Leningrad at the time, at Leningrad plant of electrical industry. In the USSR, the young specialists were given jobs by the government according to their received qualification, and those jobs could be anywhere in the USSR. I think for the first couple of years after the graduation, you were not allowed to swap your job place. You were just supposed to work where you were sent to by the government. So my parents were quite happy that they were not sent away too far away from Leningrad. When I was little, we lived in a communal flat. You say apartment in America, don't you? I will talk about communal flats, apartments later on in my video. We used to live right in the centre of the city, opposite the zoo and near the Peter and Paul's Fortress. The Peter and Paul's Fortress is situated on a little island called Hare Island. It's called Hare Island because apparently over 300 years ago, when St. Petersburg was founded, there were a lot of rabbits, hares, on the island. St. Petersburg was founded by Peter the Great in 1703 in order to defend Russia's Baltic territories from the Swedes. According to a centuries-old tradition, a cannon is fired every day at 12 o'clock at midday. We always knew when midday was because of this massive cannonball shot. Living next to the zoo also meant that we were woken up every morning to the sound of the animals roaring and making noise. I was so used to those sounds that I found them very comforting. When I was little, the island with the Pitt and Paul's fortress was like my cultural playground. It was a fascinating place to visit for a child, and since we lived in such close proximity to it, 
Sometimes it felt like I lived in the grounds of the fortress itself. Well, some people actually did have flats there. There were all the interesting museums within the grounds, like the prison itself, the space museum. The official name for it was, well, is the Museum of Cosmonautic and Rocket Technology. I think the museums were free or cost next to nothing. The gorgeous Peter and Paul's Cathedral was always open to the general public. By the way, Peter the Great himself and the last Tsar, the Emperor of Russia, and his family are buried there. The Peter and Paul's Cathedral is situated on a square which in Russian we call Money Square because there is a mint in one of the buildings. Mint is an industrial facility which manufactures coins that is used as currency. It was founded in 1724 and is still used now. When I was little, my parents secretly would throw some coins for me to find amongst the cobbled floor. I used to think it was a magic cobbles which produced the coins only for those people who deserved it. There was, still is, also a very nice sandy beach area near the Neva River on the island of Pitt and Paul's Fortress, and a nice grassy areas where people were sunbathing and playing frisbee and ball. When I was little, the walls of the fortress were still not all restored. The walls were not smooth, so you could easily climb up them. This was one of my best activities to climb those walls. My mum would never let me swim in the river from that nice sandy beach, because the riverbed was quite rough and the water wasn't very clean. But some people did swim there, and even swam there in the early spring when it was still cold. Those group of people were called walruses. I think in America they have polar bear clubs like this. In the Soviet Union, the government was very conscious about everybody looking after their environment. So every so often we would have those special Saturdays that we used to call Subotnik, where people would get together and tidy up their environment, the territory where they lived. So some people would get rid of the rubbish or dig up new flower beds, maybe get rid of the old leaves. It wasn't just adults who were doing this. Children could help as well. I loved helping my mum during Subotniks, during those Saturdays where we were all working together. Now let me explain to you about the communal flat or apartment where we lived in. We called it Kamunalka. During Soviet years, communal flats were a typical living arrangement for a lot of people in Leningrad and Moscow. I guess not a lot of accommodations were being built in those years and people had to live somewhere. So a few families, like five or six families, would share one flat. Each family would occupy one bedroom and all of the families would share one kitchen, one bathroom and one toilet. The rooms were the size of an average flat in some houses. This was because the building where our flat was used to belong to one of the rich aristocrats of the Russian Empire. Not all communal flats were so big. In the kitchen, each family had their own area to prepare food. We had timetables for when we could wash up or use bathrooms for big washers. In the bathroom, we had an old-fashioned wood-burning boiler to warm up the water. Most people didn't have a washing machine, so we used to hand wash everything in the bathroom. I used to always help my mum with washing, but when my sister was born, I used to help my mum by looking after my sister while my mum was doing the washing. Each family had its own designated slot of time, so we couldn't just do it any time we wanted to. In our flat, the toilet was really far away from the bathroom and from the room where we lived. It was at the end of a very dark 20 meter long corridor. So whenever I needed a toilet as a child, I had to conquer my fears of the dark and just 
run for it, run along that corridor, only sometimes to realise that it was occupied. There was a deficit of toilet paper, so instead of the toilet paper, people used newspaper. And quite often, instead of doing their business in the toilet, they were just reading the newspapers. We used to use something special as an air freshener. And guess what it was? We used to light a match. And instead of the foul smell, there was a nice burning smell of the match. One day, someone actually put a light bulb in that corridor. The ceilings were so high that it was really difficult to change a bulb there. After that, my childhood friend down the corridor and I started using the corridor as a perfect place to ride our self-made scooters. I think adults hated living all in one flat. They used to get on each other's nerves living in such close proximity to each other all the time. But us children loved it. We always had someone to play with. In the room next door to us, there lived a nosy old lady with her cat. Any time she used to ask questions like why my dad was working so late or other personal questions, I used to answer her, why don't you go and see to your cat? He probably misses you. My mom used to giggle at me secretly at the time. I didn't understand why she was doing that because I was really serious about sending her back to her cat. When I turned six, my family had finally received our own three-bedroom flat from the government. It was on the outskirts of St. Petersburg, near to where my mum and dad worked. The place was semi-rural and semi-urban. It was where River Ijora goes into River Neva, and where in 1240 Alexander Nevsky fought against Swedish, Norwegian and Finnish armies. It is quite an iconic place and has a beautiful church on the place of the battle. In winter, Riveniva freezes, so we used to cross over onto the other side where Nevsky Lesser Park is. Nevsky Lesser Park is a gorgeous forest area where we used to cross country ski. The bank of the river is very rural in that area with little cottage houses. This is where we used to train with my cross-country skiing club. There's so much to talk about when I start reminiscing. There's the berries and mushrooms foraging in summer. There's a nut to it all. Talking about the art, I haven't even covered the cultural side of my early years and the long hours I spent admiring and observing the history and art in the Hermitage Museum, the Winter Palace. I haven't talked about the amazing long walks we took as teenagers in the city. Or the mesmerizing ballet we so often watched in the grand theatres. There's so much to say, I don't think I can fit it all in one video. I might record another one if you are interested. I think I will finish for now. Please let me know if you would like to know more about my culture and growing up in the Soviet Union in particular. Goodbye for now, until we meet again.